everyone, I'm Dr. Marikar Sison and welcome to our course, Methods of Research. Today, we're going to discuss research hypothesis. So, what is a research hypothesis? A research hypothesis, according to Ariola in 2006, is a suggested answer to the problem. According to Calaguas in 2015, a research hypothesis is a belief or prediction of an eventual outcome of the research. It is a concrete, specific statement about the relationships between phenomena based on deductive reasoning. Therefore, a hypothesis is a proposed explanation for a phenomenon. Hypothesis consists of independent and dependent variables. Hypothesis also is, is not a final answer, but rather a proposal to be tested and evaluated. For example, a researcher may hypothesize that there is a relationship between personality characteristics and cigarette smoking, or another researcher might hypothesize that a dark environment causes depression. According to Aquino in 1992, there are different characteristics of hypothesis. First, it should conjecture upon relationships between two or more variables. Second, it should be stated clearly and unambiguously in the form of a declarative sentence. And third, it should be testable, that is, it should be possible to state it in an operational form which can then be evaluated based on data. Now let us discuss the common classification of hypothesis. First is the research hypothesis. It is a possible solution to the research problem posited. It is a prediction. It is a statement in declarative form. It is also known as an alternate hypothesis. So we have here an example. The sub-problem is, what is the relation between IQ and achievement? The hypothesis is, IQ and achievement are positively related. Next classification of hypothesis is the statistical hypothesis. It may either be null hypothesis or alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is stated in a null form which means there is no significant relationship or difference between the independent and dependent variable. Null hypothesis is a hypothesis of no relationship or no difference. Example of null hypothesis, there is no significant relationship between IQ and achievement. Another example, there is no significant difference between educational attainment and teaching effectiveness. There are different sources of hypothesis. First is problem statement. Because the hypothesis identifies the specific variables and their relationships, it forms the foundation for the future research study. Another is theoretical framework. Theoretical framework or conceptual framework are the most important sources of hypothesis. Through a deductive approach, these hypotheses are drawn from testing them. Example, Ivan Pavlov's theory. So hypothesis can be drawn about modification of behavior. Next is related literature. Academic literature is based on formal theories, empirical evidences, experiences, observations, and conceptualizations of academicians. This literature may serve as a good source for formulating hypotheses for research studies. And the last is observation and experiences. Real-life experiences may contribute in the formulation of hypotheses. A famous physicist, Sir Isaac Newton, had life-changing experience of the falling of an apple and formulated the hypothesis that the Earth attracts all the mass towards its center before generating a law of gravity. Now let us proceed to the characteristic of a good hypothesis according to Almeda et al. in 2016. A good hypothesis is usually founded on established theories or developed from the results of previous research. Specifically, a good hypothesis should have two logical conclusions of a logical argument. For example, Premise 1, Academic success is highly valued and respected in society. Premise 2, 
being valued and respected by others, contribute to high esteem. Conclusion or hypothesis, higher levels of academic success will be related to higher levels of self-esteem. Next characteristic is testable. A good hypothesis must be testable. That is, it must be possible to observe and measure all of the variables involved. The hypothesis must involve real situation, real events, and real individuals. You cannot test a hypothesis that refers to an imaginary terms or hypothetical situations. And the last is refutable. A testable hypothesis must be refutable. It must be possible to obtain research results that are contrary to the prediction. For example, if the research hypothesis predicts that the treatment will cause all increase in scores, it must be possible for the data to show a decrease. Now how about hypothesis and assumption? What is the difference between the two? When we say an assumption, it is a statement of the research behavior to facts but cannot be verified. Whereas, hypothesis is testable and verifiable, and thus confirm or disconfirm a theory or theorist. That's all from now. Thank you and keep safe.